So what is ranked choice voting? Because we've we've heard about it, you guys have heard about it. Maybe you're already against it, maybe you know everything about it. But the man who knows everything about it is Phil Eisen out of Alaska because he's been fighting it in Alaska and uh, has been has been doing a true grassroots campaign. And it's my pleasure to welcome to the show. Phil, can you hear us? How are you? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great. You look great. I thank you uh, for, for joining us on the program today. You have been um, a warrior for this issue in educating people on the dangers of rain choice voting and, of course, what has happened in Alaska. The biggest thing that um, I think is, is on people's radar was the, the election when Sarah Palin was running for U.S. Congress. And we have a clip. I want to show this clip first and, and, then, and then throw it to you. Um, we have Sarah Palin who was on – I think she was on um, – uh, Steve Steve Bannon's uh, show. So let's watch this. It's a quick clip. Let's just watch uh, her reaction to what's going on in uh, in Alaska. You called it, Steve, when you explained what this new fangled cockamamie system called ranked choice voting is all about. When it doesn't matter if you perhaps are the most popular or most qualified candidate. Uh, no, it, it you can get a whole lot of votes, Steve. But if you don't get enough second or third rankings from voters who choose another candidate, then you're eliminated or then you get second place and you don't win. And it's complicated. You explained it best. President Trump explained it very well in a rally that he had up here, warning Alaskans that uh, this newfangled experiment with ranked choice voting will split votes. It will allow liberals to skip on in, which is exactly what's happened thus far. And um, it's a it's a very, very uh, potentially fraught with fraud, even system. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Phil, anything wrong that she said there? What what's what have you been fighting? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's strange is that I actually worked on Palin's campaign uh, during that election. And uh, I was actually the only poll and election watcher on uh, for the U.S. for the very first ranked choice voting um, uh, tabulation ever in the history of Alaska. I was the only one there. It was crazy. And then, uh, you know, there was like, I'm just going to say it because it's interesting. Uh, but there was a guy fr from Dominion there and he was, uh, he was a Canadian national, but he was definitely Chinese. Uh, he wore a mask and he didn't like answering any of my questions. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but that's true. That was firsthand experience. And he was only there that one day, the very first day, but it was very strange uh, interactions. And so, you know, at that, you know, I would say that 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 that, that experience kind of left a little bit with me just because like I had not had any experience with the ranked choice voting. And so being able to like work on Palin's campaign that intimately and see kind of like what that's like. But then I stopped working on Palin's campaign after the Trump event here in Alaska. And I went and I was a press person for uh, Trump's I actually booked his rally here in Alaska, too. Um, and so I, I did all like a lot of photography and things like that that were used in Palin's campaign for a Trump event, other uh, stuff. But I stopped working on our campaign after that. And I, I was doing other things. And uh, my grandfather was going hunting. And so the hunting up here in the fall is a big popular thing, like moose hunting, uh, you know, is a big deal. And so he was talking to me about we were discussing hunting and he decided to uh, bring up the ballot. And I was like, OK. Um, and he said, I didn't understand it. I was like, what do you mean you don't understand it? And he goes, what? I didn't understand the ballot. And I was like, you know, very confused. You know, like, I'm pretty protective of my family as well. And my, you know, especially my granddad, his family's taking advantage of him. Well, at the time, I didn't know he had cancer. And so I'm, that may have played a role, if you want to say. But the reality is, is, like, I was very upset about the fact that he didn't understand that. And so I, I started, I was like, you know, I bet other people also didn't understand it. And so I started looking into it. And so we had, and most people don't realize that, like, think that that was November. It's like, no, because of ranked choice voting, they got rid of the appointment process. And so Don Young passed away. And so after 50 years, he was a Republican. Uh, so the, that U.S. House seat was held by a Republican in Alaska for 50 years, long time. Um, Democrat hasn't ever been able to beat Don Young. Don Young passes away, unfortunately, uh, you know, and so we would have had an appointment process. If we had the closed primary with the first past the post voting system, it would have been an appointed process. So he would have just been to appoint this person um, and, and that would have finished out that year. And then we'd have had the election. 
Well, because of the ranked choice voting, that brought on the special election process. And uh, so that required us to do the special primary and special general. And so just those two things cost two and a half million dollars. Just that. Um, normal elections in Alaska from 2010 to 2020, average election from the money, state money spent is 3.3 million. That's how much money they spend average from that's directly from Lieutenant Governor's office. I'm the only person I know that has this information. And it's because I fought for a year and a half to get it too. But the, the point is, is like, so three and a half million is what 3.3 3 to three and a half million is what their average spend is. And so uh, the state spent two and a half million just on the special election. Then they spent three and a half million on ranked choice voting, uh, education and uh, equipment setups and stuff. And then on top of all this, they, they're spending $4 million every five years for Dominion software. And then another $75,000 a year for ranked choice voting software access. Um, and so on all that, then they spent $5 million on the ranked choice voting regular election. So the, the election total from 20, uh, for 2022 cost $11.1 million. And our average is only three and a half or 3.3 million. So this one's 328% more expensive or three times as more expensive than any election ever done in the state's history. Um, so, and it's more, and it's more confusing, right? As, more, as, as, more, as, it's the only type that you can exhaust ballots. Uh, and like, I keep, I, I don't cover this topic enough. Unfortunately, like I've been on like, uh, I don't know how many calls over the last couple of days, <laughs> a lot. And so every time I get on there, no one knows what exhausted ballots is. And I was just like, Oh no. Or, I know. Uh, yeah. Well, well, for, for the sake of our audience, can you tell us what an exhausted ballot is? Yeah. Since you're, you, you've got it. I just want to point out though, is that don't feel bad that you don't know what it is because sure. I've been in interviews with Politico and they didn't, they, they, and they all give me the same answer. And then this other guy, uh, he was pro rank choice. He came on a, on a spaces and I'm love talking to those guys. I've debated like the father of rank choice voting in San Francisco and Oakland. So, there's not going to be too many of these uh, these paid stooges that are going to know very much about the system. And so he goes into this. He's like, oh, I really like ranked choice voting. And he started telling me all about it. I'm like, so do you know what exhausted ballots are? And he's like, yeah. I was like, can you tell me? And I asked Politico the same thing. And so uh, the reporter from Politico tells me the exact answer that I'm expecting. And she goes, well, uh, if someone is, uh, you know, if they're low ranking candidates, so if you rank your, I mean, okay, explain the whole system, then I'll explain the exhausted ballot. So you have jungle primary. So in that you get pick one. So you go into the ballot, you got a, a string of candidates. There's, there's no designation of the Republican or except they have like an R or D or an I next to their name. And so you can just pick one. And then, so after that, it goes to this ranked choice type system. So in some systems it's top two, like San Francisco and Oakland, uh, others are top four. So like Alaska and Idaho would be a top four if you guys end up getting that. And so if that, so out of that list of candidates, only the top four that got the most votes goes into that election. And so then that's when you rank. So primary, you pick one jungle primary, pick one person. And then whoever gets the most votes, the top four go into the general, and then you rank one, two, three, four, you're supposed to. And if you don't do that, it messes with the system. So if you only pick one, then you're vote has the risk of being exhausted or removed from the tabulation. So if you have a denominator and you have total, you know, people that voted for this person, then you have total votes cast, you're actually removing the vote from the denominator entirely. Um, and, 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 you know, and, but the point is, is like, it's actually getting rid of the total votes cast. And so let's say you voted for Joe, but you know, John won. Well, Joe's not even in, in the calculation anymore. So John now can get 50, over 50% because you're not even, your votes aren't even counted. So for instance, uh, Lisa Murkowski said she got over 50% for the very first time. U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski in Alaska, very first time in her entire political career got more than 50%. That's her claim. And Mary Peltola, U.S. Representative Mary Peltola, um, first Democrat representative in Alaska's uh, last 50 years. Um, and so these two people both claim they got over 50%. But when you do this, you you were moving ballots. Then when you exhaust ballots, it, it is now giving these guys a manufactured majority. It's a book I actually wrote called Manufactured Majority. And it discusses how when you remove these exhausted ballots from the tabulation, you're actually creating a majority. And it's not an absolute majority. Absolute majority is election term that has to do with total votes cast. That means you get over 51 percent 
of the yeah, total. And, so right. And, and pulling votes out, that's no longer the total votes. You've created your own total now. And so right. and that can get crazy. So in the Denver Post, this was an article just the other day because they're facing rank choice. And so I'm, I, I brought this up. And people said I was wrong. And then the Denver Post guy wrote about it. And I was like, see, other people are awesome. <laughs> yeah, really because cool. because what you're saying, real, real, real quick, because um, uh, we have this clip from Rachel Maddow, who was announcing an election, I think that was happening in Maine. And let, let's roll this clip. Let, let's see if we can just put it up beside us here. Um, graphic a minute ago that I just want to explain what that was. We put up that main graphic again. Just talking about the fact that this race was now called by NBC News for the Democrat, Jared Golden, defeating Bruce Poliquin, the Republican incumbent congress congressman in Maine's second district. The reason it looks like Golden has less vote, but he got but he got called uh, is because Maine uses ranked choice voting, which means Maine voters uh, pick their first, second and third choices. Uh, when they go to vote, and if neither candidate gets 50% on the first round of voting, then what they do is they go see who other people voted for, whether there are other people who voted for the Green Party candidate or the Libertarian candidate, who'd they pick second? Those second choice votes then get retabulated for the top two contenders. And it was that ranked choice voting process um, after neither of the major party candidates got to 50%, which resulted ultimately in the Democrat in that race, unseating the Republican incumbent. Our graphic looks screwy because we only had the first round of voting on the screen, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I mean that is ridiculous. So clearly, after the first round, the the winner was the Republican, but they kept, like you're saying, they they they, they exhaust ballots to get over that fifty percent. But it's not the fifty percent of the total people that walked in that day, right? You actually have people. So uh, and you have people have uh, two parts to this. One is you're going to have voters to get one vote, um, some voters to get two votes, some to get three votes, some to get four votes, and some to get zero votes because their vote got th thrown out of the election, and so. Yeah, it, you you literally have votes tossed and like removed, and and so that means people that woke up in the morning, you know, uh, decided to set out their day to make sure that they made sure they did their civic duty and voted. We already have incredibly low percentage of turnout in general in most elections, so the last thing you want to do is start disenfranchising people by tossing their votes prematurely, right. and so th this actually gets kind of nasty because like okay, you're like okay, well that's just the one way. Remember. That's how Politico explains it. That's just the one way is if you vote for that person, they get eliminated and your vote gets thrown out. That's what the pro RCV people will tell you. That's what the, the political uh, journalists know. But there's actually way more than that. You can have your votes thrown out by ranking the same person more than once. And it's called an overvote. You know, you can have it undervote where you, you don't, you know, uh, you don't fill in all the ballot, uh, all the boxes correctly. If you fill it the same, can if you give uh, multiple candidates the same rank, it also has your vote thrown out. If you make too many marks on the ballot, your vote can be thrown out. So there's like four or five different ways to actually have votes exhausted. And so this is something that I personally think I, I'm one of the main uh, drivers behind is that I want to see the exhausted broken up into sections. I want to see how many people overvoted, how many people undervoted, how many people. Okay. And so when I did this, I found in Oakland, I found this data, this data was actually available. And they found that one in four poor minority communities actually had their votes thrown out because of ballot errors. Wow. One in four, upwards of 25% in poor in the poor minority communities. And then one in 15 in rich white communities. And so there, this doesn't help minorities. It doesn't help poor people. It doesn't help anybody, really. Um, <laughs> it, what it is, it's a, and from my observation, it's an elitist voting system. It's not pushed by Democrats. It's not pushed by um, Republicans. And it's not pushed by third parties. It's pushed by uh, millionaire, billionaire. Club. Yeah. Powerful elites. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, Phil, uh, we've we, 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 we've got a ton of guests we're going to get to today. We've, we have your website. Yeah, we have your website up here, 907honest.com. We yes. also have, uh, let's show his two. Uh, yeah, here's your website. So everybody can go here. Um, also, you have two books out. Can you quickly, uh, we want to show uh, uh, the covers of his books. Um, this one here, Field Manual Guide to Ranked Choice Voting. Yeah, it's the most comprehensive. So Manufacturing Majority is a 100-page quick book. It just covers Alaska's election use case and just gives okay. you all the great juicy details. Uh, I always tell everyone that if you're fighting ranked choice voting, lead with Alaska. A lot of great data in there. The other book, and they, each book have the same sources. So and um, if you buy uh, digitally, they are live links. So there's you know like 100 sources in there. Oh, Field Manual is a 347-page book. Huge. And it, it covers ranked choice voting 
Uh, start to finish, it covers the funders of Ranked Choice. And so like a lot of about two years of my life built into that book. And so, um, you know, and I'm happy to make them available to groups for free. Uh, if you also have another website called rankchoiceedu.org, that's my website also. And so that's my nationwide organization that I set up to educate people about Ranked Choice. And we have about, we have a 30 part animated video series. And there's a, a, like a interviews with Lieutenant Colonel Allen West and stuff on there. So it's pretty cool stuff. So again, that's a rankchoiceedu.org. And so, Fantastic. It, and yeah. great news on uh, the AG. Don't get comfortable though, because our my attorney was the former attorney general for the state of Alaska, and he denied them for the single subject rule also. And so, and they still were able to get through the Supreme Court. I think you guys yeah. are safe. I think you guys are safe because the Supreme Court court already previously ruled that, that what they were doing was wrong. So I think you guys are good. And I'm very, very pleased and very happy. Thankful for Dorothy. Thankful for everyone in Idaho. You guys have done amazing work. You guys are going to be a highlight for this for the country on how to fight back and how awesome. to stop this. So thank you guys for that. Great. Well, thank you, Phil. Thanks for all the work that you've done. I know you've been in Idaho multiple times, helping everybody out and, and working behind the scenes too. So thanks for joining the program. Uh, we'll check in with you again. Look forward to it. Look, and, and please share a link so I can put this out there. I'd love to see it on on X as well. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. Take care. Thank you. All right.